Welcome to the spirit world, answering your questions on angels, demons, and how the spiritual and physical worlds interact. And now your hosts, Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. Well, hello there and welcome to the spirit world. I am Debbie Giorgiani with a co-host and religious demonologist, Adam Bly, and definitely you today. We're opening up the phone lines. We're talking all about fear today. Fear is not of God. Fear is of the enemy. And we're talking about it today. We really want to help folks beginning uh, right after this show for you to live your best life without all that fear. So we're going to dive right into a, a very short teaching on, on fear. And we're going to go into the Bible and to the catechism of the Catholic Church. And then we're going to go to your calls. So today we're going to start a, a, in, in a little bit of a, a different way, Adam, um, because tomorrow is our lady's birthday. And so we thought we would begin with the Magnificat. Yes, tomorrow is the Nativity of Mary. So the feast day is September 8th, 2024. For those that want to honor Mary uh, tomorrow, that would be great. So here's the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the conceit of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and he has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his children forever. Amen. Beautiful. Okay, so today we're talking about fear. Fear is not of God, so we're going to uh, dive right in and, and discuss it and talk about it so that it can help you, uh, like we said, live your best life, um, a life that is that is free of fear. And at, and and we're not talking about the 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 fear that is helpful for survival. We're we're talking about the irrational fears that that overwhelm a person, paralyze a person, get a person to feel like life is so difficult, and it's it's it becomes a, such a problem. So that's what we're talking about today. But we really do need your calls. This is your show, The Spirit World. We talk about angels and demons and everything in between. And if you have something to say about this or you're struggling with these uh, fears and you don't know what to do, uh, let's talk about it. 877-757-9424. The phone lines are wide open just for you. We've got Lori and Carol on the phones and they're um, ready, willing, and able to answer your call. They'll chat with you for a few minutes, put you on hold. You'll get to listen live. We've got our senior producer, Tim, at the controls. He's doing a fine job. And Adam, we um, are on all the socials, okay? We're on uh, YouTube and Facebook and Rumble, TikTok, Instagram, X. So Adam, please wave to everybody. The chats are going. So that is wonderful. And you can post your comments or questions there. And Tim will happily retrieve those along with Carol and put them on the uh, show document. So we'll weave them into the discussion. So Adam, I know we're going to go into scripture and we're going to go all the way back to Genesis and talk about this spirit of fear and when it was introduced. But I think this is a topic we can all um, relate to, we can all identify with in, in, at some level and, and understand it because I think, is it fair to say, Adam, we've all struggled with fears at times, you know, and even when we were, when we were little, you know, certain fears, like I know that children growing up in, in families that have a lot of tension in the home, they had a lot of fear that there was going to be a divorce or something was going to change, or they had, um, you know, all those kinds of things that they grew up with. So let's talk about it and see if we can help souls today. Okay, let's start with Genesis 3, 7 to 10. Now, to put it in context, this is right after Adam and Eve had eaten of the tree that they were not to eat of in the garden. So here's the first disobedience to God in Genesis. And this is where we see fear introduced. This is the first time fear uh, basically appears as an idea in Scripture. And there's a, there's a reason we're, we're going to do this. Um, because Eve fell, Mary is the new Eve. And so we're going to look at the contrast between the two. But let's see, how did fear enter things? Then the eyes of both of them were opened, 
and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. When they heard the sound of the Lord God walking about in the garden at the breezy time of the day, the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord among the trees of the garden. The Lord God then called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid. Because I was naked, so I hid. Now here we can see naked nakedness and the awareness of nakedness as a new nature that Adam and Eve didn't have before. They, they weren't aware of their nakedness. And because of sin, because of disobedience, they've taken on a new nature of disobedience, which caused them to have fear of God and to hide from God. So we see that sin directly leads to fear and particularly to fear of God because we know we have disobeyed our Creator. And so ultimately, fear enters our lives through sin. Now, as you said, Deb, there are natural worldly fears, like if there's a lion, you know, in the next room, I'm going to be afraid because I don't want to get eaten by the lion. That's fine. That is uh, the worldly aspects of things. But the core of things, and we don't have time to get into the animals here, but the animals lived in peace um, at the beginning. And the, the sin entered all of creation and tainted all of creation. So at the core of things is the spiritual reality of fear, which enters our lives through sin. Okay, now let's jump ahead to Luke 1, 26 to 33. Now here is Gabriel appearing to Mary to tell her God's will for her life and give her a choice whether she wants to obey. So we remember Eve disobeyed, Adam disobeyed. They took on the nature of fear. Here we have Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed of a, to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mm. So here we see the contrast between Eve and disobedience and Mary's obedience. Obedience, and yeah. There, there, you know, we need to remember the context. Her lack of fear was pretty amazing, Deb, because Gabriel's talking about her conceiving before marriage. Mm -hmm. This could have led so to her. She was so young. Yeah, this could have led to serious punishment. That's right. In the community, us being ostracized, possibly being stoned. This was a big deal for her to fearlessly say, let it be done unto me unto, unto your will to say yes to God. Okay. So here we see obedience leads to a lack of fear and a trust in God's plan. Okay, let's give a, two quick examples from the Old Testament and the Psalms about how does the Bible instruct us to think about and relate to fear. Really super famous one, right? Psalm 23, very famous psalm. We'll just read a little section here, 1 to 4. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd and there is nothing I lack. In green pastures he makes me lie down. To still waters he leads me. He restores my soul. He guides me along right paths for the sake of his name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. And we don't have time to unpack Psalm 23, but it's deep, Deb. I, I know you know that well. Mm-hmm. One one more psalm, Psalm 55, verse right. 2, and I know yeah. you want to jump in. No, 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 you go right ahead. I just wanted to encourage our listeners, Psalm 23, that is a psalm that that really we should meditate on on a regular basis. I know it, it comes up from time to time, people reference Psalm 23, but it is so powerful. I just want to encourage our listeners to please practice meditating on that psalm and really, really letting each each uh, line uh, sink in so that it builds that, that courage, that fortitude. Um, uh, go right mm-hmm. ahead, Adam. Now let's look at what we're instructed to do with basically anxieties and fears. So mm-hmm. Psalm 55, 
verse 22 cast your care upon the Lord who will give you support he will never allow the righteous to stumble so here we see in the Old Testament a reference to putting our cares on God and that's a form of trusting God right if we trust God even in difficult times we in a sense cast our care to the Lord and of course we should pray for relief from difficulties and things like that but if he allows a difficulty by trusting we can kind of transform that experience right right and trusting long term it's not just this idea of saying you know uh, jesus i trust in you and and then we go back to our own old ways we go back to, to entertaining that spirit of fear it's a, it's a constant practice of that trust a constant building of that trust it is so important that's the key right there yeah um it's it's part of the conversion process of growing in your relationship with jesus it's not as simple as as you said, of course, it's not as simple as saying, I trust you. How deep is, is that truly held in your heart? You know, it's, it's when, we're, when we're tested in life is where we find out how we really feel and think about something versus superficially saying we trust. Right. And God will give us the opportunities to, to build and grow in trust. And life is going to give those to us. And that's through God's permissive will or at his active will. I know we have a very short time before our first break. So on the other side of that, I wanted to give just a brief bit from a letter from Timothy mm -hmm. and then a letter from Peter. Right. And, and then, then we'll go into the catechism. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. finally, I want to mention what Jesus specifically says about fear. Okay, perfect. Okay, you hear the music. Um, if you'd like to call in, if you are struggling with uh, certain fears that you just want to absolutely get rid of, please call in. Let's talk about it. Uh, when we come back from the break, a little bit more about, about fear is not of God. It is of the enemy. So we'll be talking about that, and we're going into Scripture. We have Sharon waiting to come on air with us, and, and there's room for you at 877 seven five seven nine four two four eight seven 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 five seven nine four two four please call us today we'll be right back Are you facing a crisis in life? Are you feeling stuck and unable to see your way out of your current situation? You just might need a fresh perspective and we are here to assist. That's what life coaching is all about, sticking to a plan and creating new habits for a better life, all with God at the center. Look into a completely free consultation today at StandTallToday.com. We have a team of life coaches ready to help you get excited about life again at StandTallToday.com. Most of us can recall a childhood memory of innocence and a peace that only comes from God. Yet with our busy schedules today, many families don't attend church weekly or spend much time teaching their children about God. So many families now are burdened by financial and family challenges, substance abuse, and other worries. But there is hope. Studies show that people who pray regularly and practice their Christian faith are less stressed, financially stable, more compassionate, optimistic, healthier, and happier. Experience a positive difference in your life and for your family by coming home to your parish. Learn more by visiting catholicscomehome.org today. Here you may find answers to your questions and discover how Jesus and the sacraments will bless your family. There's no pressure or risk. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Do it for your kids. Do it for yourself. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. The Spirit World continues with Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Light. If you have a question for the show, call 877-757-9424 or email tsw at grnonline.com. That is correct. You can email us and we get all those emails. We put them into the mailbag show. So that's wonderful. At the end of the month, we have our open forum show. So you can call in and ask any question. You can revisit past topics. 
Um, so that, that's always a helpful show to have each and every month. Um, but today we're talking about fear, and it is, it is something we can all um, understand. We have uh, entertained fears at, at times during our, our lives, and we have also um, overcome certain fears. Like I remember, Adam, during the, the uh, COVID interruption, um, there was a lot of talk of faith over fear, right? There was a lot of talk of that. And so it was, so, it was very interesting how that was brought up in, in conversation because people were struggling, really, really struggling. And so that we decided to dedicate a whole entire show on, on this topic to help others. Now, Sharon was on the line. Sharon, if you want to call back, please do so. You were going to be first up after we just got uh, finished with this short teaching on um, fear, uh, but Sharon, please call back 877-757-9424 because uh, Sharon is dealing with something and we um, think we should address that. Also, Adam, real quickly, on um, Facebook and YouTube, we've got the comments coming in. Teresa says she has a fear about getting to heaven. You know, that that's actually a, a, a common fear of, of, of us Christians, right? This fear, are we going to make it? Are we gonna are we gonna pass that 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 judgment time and and really go into the beatific vision? So there's a lot lot to say about fears and they come in in different in, in different at different times at different levels different you know it, there's kind of a wave of fear that comes generally over over the world and over our country like we're we're in an election year so there's a lot of fears right and so there's all sorts of things that that come our way but generally we all struggle uh, at at some level with. A, a certain element of fear um, during the course of our life. So let's talk about that, Adam, but I know you're going to go back to Scripture. Yeah, so let's wrap up with um, two quick readings from some letters. So Timothy's second letter, verse 1, I'm sorry, uh, 6 to 11. Timothy's second letter, book 1, 6 to 11. For this reason I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to the Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. So much here, Deb. So we see that God's gift of his church, of Jesus Christ, the gift moving through the church, community to community down through time, gives us power, love, self-control, the destruction of death, the gift of immortality with God. There's so much here. And what Timothy is helping us do is to say, okay, instead of just wondering and having an uncertain future, here's our future. Mm -hmm. Here's a strength now in this life, and there is a future for us beyond death. Let's go to 1 Peter 5, 5 to 7. Likewise, you younger members, be subject to the presbyter, presbyters, and all of you clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but bestows favor on the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your worries upon him, because he cares for you. So here we see an echo uh, of what we saw in the Psalms, in Psalm 55, 22, to cast your care upon the Lord. So clearly Peter's quoting the Psalm there. Almost done. John 14, verse 27. Here's Jesus speaking. Peace I leave with you. Mm -hmm. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Wow. Wow, I know. You know, this is why we've got to dive into scripture. We just we, we must in order to get through uh, this this crazy thing called life. It's it's so important to be reinforced by the living word of God. May I move to the Catechism of the Catholic Church? Mhm. Mm Okay, 1808, folks, uh, we're giving you, we're citing all of the scripture passages. 
and also uh, from the catechism so that you can write it down in your in your spirit world notebook and um, and look look it up after the show 1808 in uh, paragraph 1808 in the catechism of the catholic church on fortitude one of the gifts of the holy spirit uh, fortitude also known as courage but it's actually above courage it's 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 way beyond courage so it, it goes into the virtue of fortitude and fortitude enables one to conquer fear even fear of death and to face trials and persecutions it disposes one even to renounce and sacrifice his life in defense of a just cause and it goes on from from there so you can read the whole paragraph of 1808 in the catechism very important guys so that's why these gifts of the holy spirit are available to all of us as as baptized Christians, so it's and, and confirmed. So it's very, very important that we understand this and we rely on those gifts of the Holy Spirit to help us through these troubling times. And also, Adam, back to Scripture, Psalm 91 in most translations of the Bible, Psalm 91, God's protection. Right in the middle of the psalm, it, 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 it announces and, and um, confirms that the angels are there to guard us and guide us in all our ways. So we have heavenly support, folks. We have that support. The problem is, and we've noticed it a lot in life coaching, Adam, that when people come to us and they have these these very irrational fears or these fears that are overwhelming them to the point where they can't even breathe, they're not really thinking outside of what, what's going on um, within them. They're not really looking at the entire picture. They're just, they're just being... Um, completely uh, overwhelmed to the point where they feel like I cannot even, I don't even know which, which way to turn. I don't know how to step forward. I don't know how to get, go past this. And it's, and it's so, um, it's, it's so troubling to, to watch and to hear, but it's so sad because we're, we're doing it to ourselves. We're heaping this spirit of fear on ourselves. We know it's not of God. We just uh, shared that with, with the scripture passages. And yet we're entertaining it as if we can try to somehow, um, you know, wish it away. It doesn't work like that. That spirit of fear has a lot of power over us if, if we allow it to. Right, Adam? Yeah, that's the key about allowing it to. Um, you know, in psychology, one of the, I did some work, you know, studying generalized anxiety disorder and, um, you know, being trained in some different therapies and, and the way the mind works with those things. What you're describing, that kind of being paralyzed in life, because if you if you let the anxiety kind of run the show, every possible pathway forward, you kind of catastrophize it and imagine the worst possible outcome. And instead of it, you know, being a possibility in the future, that's probably very unlikely, you make it an almost certainty and play it over and over in your mind. And so you end up turning something that's probably an unlikely thing to be anxious about, worried about, into something that almost seems like it's happening right now because mm -hmm. you're playing it in the mind. And now it becomes a fear of a present danger, even though there is no present danger. You kind of allow that to dominate you. And so, you know, part of it again goes back to, I think, social media and the Internet, which trains us um, by giving us extreme positions because that's what gets reactions and clicks. And so we kind of unconsciously get trained to be outraged and upset and everything's in the extreme. That does not work well with the human mind. It's not right. a healthy way to approach life. And the other thing I wanted to share, because we actually have um, all female callers uh, right now, um, I, I think sometimes men are hesitant. Um, just let it, um, a answer this, Adam. Men sometimes are hesitant to share that they have any fears because they have to maintain this this strong, you know, I can take care of it attitude. And, and that's not true. A lot of men struggle with fears and they just, they have no one to talk to because, you know, they don't want to appear weak. And that's, in, and it's just a way of life. It's the brokenness um, of, of, we just, you went all the way back to Genesis with Adam and Eve. It goes all the way back when that first um, fears, the fears were introduced into the world. And so we all struggle with this at some level. And I, I think it's important for men to speak up and, and it does, it's not a show of, of weakness. We really need to overcome these fears and use scripture to reinforce that and build the confidence. What do you say to that? 
Yeah, like, you know, just to take a, a very super brief Psychology 101 bit here, by verbalizing something and putting it out there with somebody you trust, it often takes away its power. When we keep things bottled up, they often seem more extreme and big and powerful than they really are. And when we say them out loud or write them out loud in a letter or a journal or a diary, it's, it's best to share it with the person and verbalize it. And it almost like takes something that's unconscious and partly hidden and puts it out in the light. And you often gain a lot of perspective and it ceases to be this kind of um, dominating force. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Adam, you ready to turn to the phones? We gave all Absolutely. the homework assignments and all the notes. And Okay, so we're going to go to Sharon called back. We are so grateful to Sharon. She called back from Gainesville, Virginia, listening on Sirius XM 130. Sharon, welcome to the program. Hi, how are you? We're doing well. How are you? I'm trying to hang in there. I, um, I have a lot of fear because my father's confiscating a Bible that was my mother's women's Bible that I bought for her, and she died in May, and um, they live about two hours from here, and, you know, he's not Catholic, he's Lutheran, and he has these narcissistic qualities in his spirit, and he's always been abusive to me as the youngest child, and so now that she's died, I'm trying to, you know, hold on to her memory and honor her wishes. She told me verbally a year ago she wanted me to have the Bible that I gave her. And a priest called him last Friday and said, can Sharon come pick up the Bibles? And he said, sure, have her bring somebody with her. And then I emailed him Thursday, like five days later, and I said, this is the day I'm coming. And he shot me this email back that was just really hostile. And he said he doesn't want me in his house and he doesn't want me coming there. And I think he's... Just so I think he probably had some mental difficulties while taking care of her at the end. And, and, I mean, he abused me the whole time when I would try to go visit her. And it was just, it's just been unbearable. I'm surprised I was able to make it through 15 minutes in their living room the last year. So I'm just, I'm horrified. I know these are evil spirits that he has. And I've been living with it my whole life. But my mother was a devout Catholic. And she was so devout in her religion, she baptized all of us Catholic. And her parents were Catholic. And she she never left it. You know, I'm just surprised she just didn't ever leave him because of his, his neglect. I just, I don't even know how she stuck through the marriage at this point. Mm -hmm. I guess she just had really strong principles. But, you know, it's just really difficult, you know, right. to understand this. Right. And um, Sharon, let me just jump in. I know Adam wants to make some comments, but Adam, if I if I may, just because Sharon, you mentioned you're the youngest child, and you so obviously you were very close to your mother. Yes. Yeah, I have the prayer book out. Would you, Would you feel comfortable giving us her first name? We can put her in the prayer book. Yes, uh, her first name is Janice. Janice. Okay. So the just just a quick couple quick thoughts, Adam. Tell me what you think of uh, my response to Sharon. Sharon. Um, if your dad is, is that way and he has these character flaws and he's, he can be abusive, you know, your mom is, your mom is in a, is in a, a better place. Your mom is in a good place. She was a devout Catholic. You said she was a very faithful woman of God. You know, she's in, she's in Jesus's care. I would not, I would not engage with your dad. Um, your dad, you said your dad's Lutheran, you know, the, it, I'm sure he's gonna, he's going to probably put the Bible on a shelf somewhere. I would not engage and make this a, a, a source of, of a real struggle. Um, you're not, I don't believe you're disappointing your mom at all. I mean, your mom is in a much higher, bigger, you know, place of understanding. And I just think I that just it, I would be closer to her because I know she made notes in the Bible and I could read her notes and, you know, it just sure. it's interrupted my, it's interrupted my grieving process. And I think you're right. You know, it, it, he's, he's impossible to deal with. I've already tried different options. Obviously, he's not going to be truthful with a priest, and he's right. just trying to be, you know, make this difficult. Right. Um, but the scariest part about it within me is the demonic control that it, that it has, because when he emails this hostility, he, he sends this message of rejection and message of denial, right. and it almost makes me feel like, 
you know, he's not my father and I should have a judge order a paternity test because he's so abusive and he's 87 years old, but that's how far the enemy takes it. Well, well, but also, Sharon, it could be his own personality or fears that he has and, and problems that he has. He's he's obviously a soul that is, is, is struggling. So the best thing we can do is pray for him and, and let him be because and not not really, I think, not really, um, you know, make things worse by it. But I understand what you're trying to say about, you you know, you can feel closer to your mom seeing the notes she made in her Bible. But keep in mind that God is much bigger than that. And, you know, your mom. Um, and, and so God will God will give you those special gifts, even if you can't get a hold of that Bible. I, I truly believe that. Adam, what do you say? Yeah, Sharon, I'm sorry to hear all this. Um, what's going on there is a manipulation to draw you into further hurt. Uh, it, there's a pattern there that, that he's doing. My advice would be to have boundaries, hold that boundary. It's a very unhealthy, toxic relationship from what you've described and what he's doing right now. I just would, in a sense, um, cut off that interaction. There could be age-related things going on too. There, there could be, yeah, some people get mean as they get very advanced. I'm not saying to like break up the family or cut off the relationship with your father overall, mm -hmm. but over this issue, it's probably just gonna be used to hurt you more the more you revisit it. So I think what Deb said is right. Like, just pray for mom, you know, if she has a little time in purgatory to do, um, try to be positive. And here's the biggest thing, Sharon, this is an opportunity to forgive. Not that you wanna embrace him and accept his meanness, but it's an opportunity just for you between you and God to forgive him and pray for him as he enters this last these last years of his life. Um, because we do have, you know, we have that commandment, of course, honor your father and your mother. Again, not that you have to take abuse or harm from him, but it's an opportunity to forgive him. And, and you can do that between you and God. Um, those are just my thoughts, Deb. Yeah, and not to focus too much on him, because when you focus too much on the negative side of all this, Sharon, it tends to overwhelm um, your your thought process in your life, and so that's not healthy for you uh, either. So, yeah. what do, what do you think, Sharon? We're gonna we we want to leave you with those comments. I just but... wonder if I should change my email and just to, to show that I set a boundary because um, I think he thinks he can still email because he did send another one. And I don't, I have a doctor I go to, and she said she would call him Monday and try to call him on the phone. But even if that's not going to be a good outcome, I don't know if, if, I'm, if, I, if I'm setting a boundary by her calling. I mean, that's just she's being kind of a referee. But with my email, like I haven't actually said to him, you know, these emails are unacceptable and you know i haven't said that mm -hmm. i just said he was being a bad i told him he wasn't being very mm -hmm. loving and i didn't appreciate what he said but i haven't told him i'm going to change my email but i think i should change my email because well but sharon how, how about just ignore the emails and just pray for him i mean you know he's he's 87 years old i mean it, right, and i right. i agree i agree with adam it's a, it's a it's a chance for you to rise above this and get past all of this hurt and i and, see yeah, yeah. I would just ignore it. He's yeah, and and just and and the less, you know, it's so interesting. I've learned this in my 50 uh, almost 59 years of life. Adam, what do you what do you what do you think about this before we go to the break? Um that if we don't if we spend more time focusing on God and less time focusing on these people that are that are difficult or toxic or abusive. I mean, it it is is it's a much more peaceful, joy-filled life. Yeah, yeah, this this kind of um, stuff, it, the person wants the interaction, right. wants the Defeat drama, it. they, they yeah. want the drama and, yep. and that unhealthy connection. So the best thing is to have boundaries and pray for them and focus on your journey with God um, and forgive, forgive, forgive. Yep, and be I at do peace. a Latin exorcism against his words to me because every morning I wake up and feel bad what he said. You know, maybe I should do a, like a Latin prayer to myself to get that demonic hostility out of me because he you know he makes me you know it's made me think I'm not worthy to have the bible you know like I'm a horrible person and I can't have the bible you know like the power and control of that is very severe so mm -hmm. I will try to make, do those prayers and thank you so much for talking to me about this 
Well, thank you, Sharon. And just, you know, go go into Scripture. Scripture is powerful, the living Word of God, and just reinforce yourself and, and, and understand that you're a, a daughter of the Most High God and constantly remind yourself of that. So, Sharon, hope this helps uh, for today, but keep us posted. Thank you for trusting us with this with this situation that you are working through. We've got uh, Anna and Gail and Liz and the others. We have room for you because Sharon just freed that phone line, 877-757-9424. We want uh, folks to break free of, of that spirit of, of fear, okay? Because fear is not of God, it is of the enemy. So let's do this together as a spirit world listeners and followers. So come on, you guys, call in 877-757-9424. Two, four. The 18th century skeptic philosopher David Hume argued the wise man should never believe in miracles because the evidence for what occurs over and over, the regular, always outweighs evidence for what does not, the rare. But is Hume right? Well, no, and here are some reasons why. First, it's not true evidence for uniform experience always outweighs evidence for what is rare. For example, have you experienced any big bangs lately? My guess is no. Does that mean we should reject the Big Bang? Of course not. Second, Hume's principle nullifies science itself. How could scientists ever reasonably use new findings to update their understanding of the universe if it's unreasonable to accept what contradicts our uniform experience? The answer is, they couldn't. So are miracles in and of themselves off limits for the wise, as Hume puts it? Absolutely not. I'm Carlo Broussard with a ready reason for Catholic Answers. Catholic.com. Life coaching has been around for many years, helping people with their relationships, careers, health, and finances. However, with Stand Tall, it's all Christ-centered, and with that important focus of mind, body, and spirit, we take life coaching to a whole new level. Find us at StandTallToday.com and get a free consultation with one of our experienced life coaches. Today is the day the Lord has made, so begin today with a new path for your life at StandTallToday.com. The Spirit World continues with Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. If you have a question for the show, call 877-757-9424 or email tsw at grnonline.com. Okay, okay, folks, no more breaks. We're going to take uh, calls and social media comments. We've got a lot of chats going, Adam, a lot of comments coming in. Uh, we have uh, Carol in Houston wants to know um, if there's examples of healthy fears, uh, things like that. We've got Valerie who is talking about what's going on in the world and how uh, we need to be prepared and eyes wide open. And I, I couldn't agree more on that. Um, it's very important to know what's going on around us and to really, um, really get ourselves in, in, in a good position. Get in a state of grace, stay in a state of grace. We say it all the time here on the spirit world. Uh, we do have full phone lines, but if you'd like to call in uh, when a line becomes open, you'll jump right in at 877-757-9424. Okay, Adam, we're going back to the phones. We're going to Gail. And Gail, is in Kent County, Michigan on Holy Family Radio. Hi, Gail. Welcome to the program. Hello, Gail. Go right ahead. Uh, I'm just trying to turn up my volume so I can hear you better. Okay. <laughs> okay, Gail. What? Can you hear us now? Yep. Okay. Let me, we'll give it one okay, more try. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, good. Well, it was just, I was Great. trying to stall there, Gail. Go right ahead. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the stall. I appreciate it. <laughs> Go right ahead. Um, I'm calling. I'm calling because um, I myself have experienced fear, and what I notice is it was much more significant in the morning, and then right as I'm going to bed. And um, I was attending a conference once with Jesse Romero and his wife, and they talked about morning demons. And I'm wondering if it's just when we're tired, 
we're more susceptible or if there are morning demons and if you can talk about how to do that and combating them with the battle of the mind. Okay, Gail. So I think it's more likely that you're musing on things like, um, you know, fearing the demonic or fearing things in general in the morning and before bed, because those are the times when we're not distracted by work and school and tasks and eating and talking to people and our phones and all of it. Our mind basically is not occupied first thing in the morning and right before bed. And so we tend to then think about the stuff that we don't, you know, we're normally distracted from. And if you have um, some understanding of the reality of the demonic, you know, and it's an invisible reality most of the time, um, I think it can creep in at those times. There is no such thing as a morning demon or an evening demon. They're just, they're like bacteria, Gail. You don't need to be overly afraid of them in the sense that their main job is to tempt people. They've always been there. They're going to be there because God allows it. Um, you do want to avoid them in their traps as much as possible, but they're just, they're part of life. And so try not to be overly anxious about it. it. They've been there your whole life. They'll be there. Again, it's like bacteria. There's this invisible thing that's kind of everywhere. Yes, it can do harm if, we, if we're not smart, if we don't wash our hands and, you know, keep things clean. We can, we can end up with a problem. Same thing spiritually. We want to stay in a state of grace, as Deb always says. Um, but there is no such thing as a, a morning or an evening demon. And before Gail responds, Adam, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree, and, and can you state this again for all of us, that this idea of focusing on certain demons at certain times, I mean, again, we're spending our, our energy thinking about the demons when we should be spending all of our focus and all of our time thinking about God. So it makes, it, it makes life much more enjoyable when we think about God, when we, when we try to when we when we are are addressing or thinking about the demons it it gets us off track very quickly and the and the world starts spiraling very very fast wouldn't you say that that happens in the work that you do yeah i mean that's the danger of too much talk about exorcism and the demonic in terms of like the gory details of it is people start imagining the really awful stuff that goes on at exorcisms and in possession as being part of their lives and you can you can end up being you know overly anxious and thinking about these these awful things and most people think about what they've seen in the movies which mostly is not accurate and all that um but yes the biggest danger deb is that you start putting the demonic at the center of your spiritual life and use that to make your decisions and that's super unhealthy because yeah. your focus should be on pleasing jesus and being close to him and growing in your relationship with god right Right. Gail, does that help today? It does. Thank you very much. Thank you. God, God bless, bless you. you. Have Yes, have a beautiful weekend. We're going to go to Anna, and Anna's in Bergen County, New Jersey, on Sirius XM 130. Hi, Anna. Welcome to the Hi. program. Is it Anna or Anna? It's Anna. It's either Anna. one. <laughs> okay, okay. You go right ahead. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So go right Hello? ahead, Anna. Yes, oh, go okay. right ahead. We're, we're listening. Oh, hi. Is this Debbie? Yes. Oh, yes. hi, Debbie. Cause it's funny because I have the radio on and I hear another talk, so I, I thought that was me. Basically, hi, I love your show. But you're Thank both you. so helpful. Um, I've suffered all my life. I'm 63 from, uh, like, health anxiety, you know, lots of anxiety. And, you know, um, I'm a practicing Catholic and I do all the devotions and I feel I've, through my life a lot of relief and all that. But... Um, and I'm, I'm in therapy now also, you know, because um, after my mom died especially, I feel like really fearful of a lot of things, and I'm better now. But really it's like the health anxiety. So if I have a, you know, if I have, a, you know, my eyes, is it the flash in the eye or pain in my side or any kind of thing immediately goes to, like, the worst-case scenario, and it brings a lot of anxiety and, and you know, suffering to my life. So um, I just don't know, you know, if, if it's a cross I have to bear to keep close to God or just keep praying. And, you know, I don't know what the solution is. Okay, Anna. So, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, that you've had this your whole life. Um, you know, back, back when I was in graduate school in psychology, one of the things they told us right at the beginning of the training was, as you read and study all the mental disorders and you read the details and you know in the dsm 
um, you're going to think you have everything, you know, you have, because there's a touch of all these problems in everyone. The problems are an exaggeration of issues we all have. So, you know, and we all do this with Dr. Google, you know, we, we have a bump on our arm and we, we Google it and look up and we think, oh, it's got to be cancer, that kind of thing. Um, it We don't necessarily assume it's the worst, but you know what I mean. We all kind of have that little bit of that anxiety. But here's the thing, and it sounds like, um, and, you know, we can't get into the experiences in your life. Maybe you had a health scare early on or somebody in your family had a health scare and you lost them. Um, there could be a, a kind of developmental basis of this, an experience, experiential basis of this, but it also could be brain chemistry, just kind of general anxiety. And this is something your mind can latch onto that's concrete to make sense of the anxiety in a sense. So I would just continue with therapy. Mm -hmm. If they recommend medication, you know, talk with talk with them about that. Talk with your doctor. Maybe I'm, I'm on. Yeah. yeah. My, my mom died three and a half years ago. I'm, I've been widowed. My father. You know, I live alone, so that makes me more anxious. You know, mm -hmm. I'm 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 a young 63. I have a great family, but you know, brothers, sister, whatever. But the thing is that. It's a trigger for me, and uh, the therapist thinks my mom was a very wonderful but very fearful ang anxiety always, mm -hmm. and I absorbed all that from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it could be genetic. It could run in the family. You know, the brain is a, is a big organ, and it um, we can have a genetic predisposition to various things. You know, I, I know I have a disposition to be absent-minded, and I forget stuff easily, just like my dad did, and, and I did the genetic testing, and I have those genes. Um, so we, we can inherit things that are psychological, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, you're doing all the right things. Right. I would go ahead and pray for healing, and St. Dymphna is a good one to go mm -hmm. to for any mental disorders or anxieties. So maybe develop. And Padre Pio. And mm -hmm. Padre Pio. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and uh, do your best to yeah. bear, bear up under whatever can't be resolved. And the other thing, too, Anna, is I would definitely lean on your guardian angel and ask your guardian angel to help you through through um, through your daily um you know, the things you, you are doing, especially when you're alone, right? Because when you're alone, that's when your mind starts, you know, working overtime and things like that. So ask your guardian angel to, to really walk with you, help you so that you can stay focused and also stay not so much in your, in your head, but also be, you know, engaging with, you said you've got a great family, you have a good support system around you, you're getting professional help. That's awesome. So I agree with Adam, you're doing all the right things, but ask your guardian angel to help you with this, with this high level of anxiety. Anxiety. I know that when I asked my guardian angel to really step in during during difficult times, boy, uh, did did they did they really uh, work very fast to to help me be at peace. So I, I hope that encourages you today. Okay. I do I do you know I do the prayers. I do all that. Um, I kind of feel like this has been my whole life, and I don't know like if I have hope of ever you know that this stops or this is just a, like a cross that I. That God wants to keep me close to Him by this, maybe. Well, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but well, talk to talk to who the counselor that you're working with about that is. Is it a Christian counselor? Or are they a Christian no, counsel? No, no, she's she's a she's a really good psychologist, but she's okay. She's, it's not like a Christian based situation, you know. Okay, well then maybe also get a little bit of spiritual direction if you can find somebody you trust in the church. But Anna, the other thing too, Adam, what do you think of this? We always say this in coaching. Don't don't focus so much on the 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 struggles that you're having that this is some kind of cross because when you do that you're 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 taking it upon yourself that it may not be for you do you know what i'm trying to say you may it may be something you're struggling with through life and and things like that but you don't have to necessarily um be um um okay with it if you will or accepting of it, it there's things you can work through to to better your life so don't don't always accept that as just your first thing what do you say to that adam because i know sometimes people will have an issue and they'll say well it's just my cross in life well then that means you're not going to work through it you're just going to accept it and and you're not you're not going to do the things to 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 um advance yourself out of it what do you say adam yeah just a final thing anna you mentioned you're you're a healthy 63 I would try to get out of the house and get involved in things at the parish, volunteer as much as possible, get out amongst people, um, chat with them, get, get some activities to get you out of the house. That that will probably help a little bit because when yep. we sit and just kind of stew and focus on things, we, we can 
end up in a in a, in kind of a worse place. Yep, absolutely. And we're going to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, good. You're active. Good. Well, keep that youthful spirit. Okay. You're doing good. <laughs> okay. God bless you and have a beautiful weekend. And thank you for calling in. We're going to move to Patricia. Patricia's in Buffalo, New York. And Patricia's listening on our friends at the Station of the Cross. Hi, Patricia. Welcome to the program. Oh, hi, Debbie. And thank you so much, both you and Adam, for the show. It's wonderful. And this is take two, and I'm a new (laughs) listener, so I'm nervous. Oh, no, don't be uh, (laughs) nervous. We're very friendly. Go right ahead. Oh, gosh. Okay, and I just want to thank you so much. Um, Basically, my call is for two reasons, and one is a bit off topic, and one is the fear. Um, As far as the fear is concerned right now, just a bit of a difficult situation. I'm caregiving, and um, my mom is elderly and that. had a difficult night uh, giving medicine last night, but got through it, and so you know, thank God for that. And um, I'm really grateful. But the second reason, I I was a chamber music musician. Of course, I'm caregiving now, so I'm not doing that. Um, But I just happened to walk in when Adam was reading the uh, 23rd Psalm, Mm -hmm. and it just struck me so, his voice is so wonderful, Mm -hmm. as is yours, Debbie. And Mm -hmm. as far as you're concerned, I I feel like you're a personal coach. I mean, it's just -hmm. wonderful hearing you on both the shows. And it's so enlightening. But I think both of you are so gifted that if you'd ever consider doing a recording of it, I'm sure there would be enough of us here, you know, in the in the uh, both in um, your show and in the Take Two community that would be willing to to buy it. Mm-hmm. And there's also something just as a musician. There's something about listening to the word being read by a great voice. You know, mm-hmm. you just seem to take it in more. Just it's something to consider, the 23rd Psalm or the Book mm-hmm. of Ephesians, something like that in the future. Okay. I'd be really grateful. Okay, definitely. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. But you also probably, do you have something to share about fears? Because we're, we're going to be down to the final two minutes. Oh, sure. Um, basically, I know my fear will be overcome through Jesus Christ and Father God. So even though my situation is a bit difficult now, and it was almost impossible last night, I know that, you know, over that is he's greater than everything and that he will handle it no matter what all the audience is going through. You know, if you can see the big picture and we're, like Debbie, where we're headed and Adam, where we're he- headed. Mm-hmm. And you're just so wonderful explaining that to all of us. I just greatly appreciate it. <laughs> that's, that's basically what I had to say about it. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate that very, very much. God bless you. And we'll take, we'll take that all in and, and, Yes, thank you. Call us again for sure, definitely. Um, you know, this is the point of the show that we absolutely don't like because we have full phone lines, and we are so sorry. We're not going to get to Jane in, in Massachusetts, Robert in Texas, Liz in New York, Berta calling in from Panama. Oh, we're, we're so sorry we didn't get you on air with us, And but you have something to say about uh, uh, response to Sharon about the guardian angels. You say, you're saying go to your guardian angel to uh, help you with this uh, uh, struggle with your dad. That's a good advice there. Uh, Therese uh, from Houston, thank you so much. Carol and Lori will pick up the phones now and we'll get your comments for our mailbag edition of the Spirit World. Adam, this is the part of the show that I just don't care for when we leave callers on the line waiting to be on air with us so i know and i and i understand the response is going to be from listeners well you need a second hour (laughs) okay we're trying to squeeze it all into one hour right adam yeah and um but do please stay on and give your messages to the call screeners or email them in or, or text them in um something like that and everybody uh don't forget tomorrow is mary's birthday Uh, So it is the Feast of the Nativity of Mary. Um, If you haven't picked up your rosary in a long time, pick up your rosary. Reflect on her yes, um, that she said her cooperation with our salvation, and uh, say happy birthday to her. Absolutely. Okay, that'll do it, folks. We want to thank the show team, Carol and Lori on the phones, doing such a great job. Thank you. Our senior producer, Tim Mott, excellent. Thank you to everybody on social media, getting all those chats going and all the comments. We're waving to you again. Have a beautiful and blessed weekend for you guys on the chats. And you can always email us if you have something to say after the show, tsw at grnonline.com. That'll do it, folks. For Adam Bly, I'm Debbie Giorgiani. Until next Saturday. Have a beautiful and blessed week. We'll see you real soon.